Welcome to a special edition of Municipal Affairs, where we are going to embark on a journey through the heart of our diverse nation to reflect on the year that was and cast our gaze towards the horizon of 2024. Now, my name is Christopher Brown, and today, this Sunday, December 31st, 2023, we have an exceptional lineup of municipal leaders from coast to coast to coast, each with unique perspectives on the challenges and triumphs that define 2023 and the aspirations that shape their vision for the coming year. Now, as we journey through the diverse municipalities, it will become crystal clear that while each city town, village, or even rural municipality face their unique challenges alone, they share a common thread of resilience and commitment to building a brighter future tomorrow. Today, we are going to embark on a conversation that transcends geographical boundaries, uniting us in the pursuit of municipal excellence. So buckle up, dear viewers as we delve into the collective wisdom of our esteemed guests, exploring the lessons learned, the achievements celebrated, and the aspirations that fuel the spirit of municipal leadership. Stay with us as we journey through time and space, as we recap 2023 and set our sights on the promise of 2024. This is Municipal Affairs. Councillor Elwood, thank you so much for doing this. I have two questions for you as this is December 31st, the end of the year. My first question is, looking back on the last 12 months, how did you think you did as a councillor and how did you think the village of Alberta Beach performed in the last 12 months? Oh, the last 12 months has been a kind of a little bit of a roller coaster for me. Um, my my friend and my mentor Angela resigned and I've literally stepped into her shoes <laughs> in every which way possible um so it, it's been a, a bit of a challenge for me but it's been a roller coaster that I've I've really enjoyed riding on and my municipality is doing fine fine they're they're great I have amazing administration here that honestly makes us look good. So my second question is, as it is the end of the year, and this episode will be airing December 31st, what does 2024 hold for you and for Alberta Beach? Is there anything you're looking to get accomplished or move forward from a counselor's perspective, but also from a village perspective? You know, I'm I'm just hoping that and and I know we will because we've always worked really well together. That that our councils just work continues to work collaboratively together. Um, we all have different personalities, different opinions, but we always come ahead and we've worked through everything uh, cohesively for the betterment of of the village. And what about and for I think your, Albert for yourself Beach is going to myself. <laughs> Well, on a personal note, I'm, uh, I'm because I'm a glutton for punishment. I'm actually going to, <laughs> besides keeping my roles here as well, and I don't know how it would work. Uh, I, I am going to continue to run for AB Minis again at the next conference. I'm hoping to keep my my role there. I'm just getting started, and I like to keep the momentum. But I'm also challenging my my reservations election act, and I'm hoping to run as a councillor there as well. Uh, Mayor Schonberg, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start with a sort of the end of the year question as this episode is airing December 31st. For you as mayor of Assiniboia, how did 2023 go? Well, I think 2023 was a whirlwind. I don't know where those 12 months went, but I think it went well. Um, again, we, we, we tried to maintain status quo, but I think we went 110 miles an hour. I think we, every project that we set out to do, we completed, uh, infrastructure, sidewalks, paving, uh, continued on with other projects that those, those are still in the works, but I think we had a pretty successful year with, uh, an organization of us that 
I thought would have gotten tired by now, but we just seem to be ramped up and keep going. And, and we're just hitting the ground running all the time and, and keeping that positive vibe and, and making us in a way the best place to live. For you as mayor, how was your 2023? My year of 2023 was great. Um, I, as, as mayor of this community, not only, and absolutely there was, there was some tough days. I mean, any, any task or any job you take on, there are always those tough days, but you know, I, I always tend to focus on the positive and, and I got to uh, be part of so many incredible events this year and, and meet so many people this year. My goodness, from, from all walks of life and, and, you know, from new physicians to country music artists to, to just everybody in between and, and be part of so many things. Uh, I just, I loved my year. I really did. I just, I, and I look forward to 2024 because, you know, I look back in my planner, I'm still that paper planner guy. I don't put stuff in my phone, right? I write it down. And when I look back over the year, cause I always do, I go back, my God, did I ever do a lot of stuff and, and be part of things. And I try to make a lot of events and I try to get to everything in this community, but Oh my God, it was just, it was, it was good. And, and, and I just, I'm so thankful that for the people that I have that I work with, that I'm, I'm proud to work with in this office and council um, because we truly are a, a really good team. And I know we're going into year four and I know there'll be an election next year. So, you know, the question has already been asked, are we going to run again? But it's just, it's been a great year for the town of Assiniboia. And I, and I really am positive for the year 2024. And I, I can't wait. I can't wait. So it begs the last question is, what does 2024 have in store for not only the town, but for you as mayor as well? <sighs> For the town, we have a lot more projects on the go. We have a lot more uh, things we need to do, um, uh, you know, as, as far as development wise and, and planning and development and, and what we're looking for, our strategic plan continues on. Um, and that's that's always going to be, and it is it's it is very time consuming, but, you know, when you have that passion for, for success for your community, you don't mind you don't mind putting in the time because it's it's well worth it. And for me, that's that's what it is, is is finding the time. It's and I always try to, you know, my thing for 2024 will be to find more of a work life balance. I don't know. I'm not very good at that right now. So I'm trying um, and I'm succeeding at some points. But it's it's for me, it's just I can't wait to see, you know, there is an election next year. So are my council going to run? Am I going to run? what, you know, what's going to happen in the next 12 months or whatever it may be. But, you know, we're, we're, we're getting things done and, and we're, we're so positive. And again, just working with it, I, myself, I, I can't wait. I, I just think it's going to be a good year. And I think it's the year of the dragon. And I think that's my year because my, my Chinese Zodiac thing. So it should be my year. I'm just going to say that. Counselor, I thank you so much for doing this. I have two questions for you, and it's uh, as it is December 31st, I've got to ask you directly, looking back on the last 12 months of 2023, how did you think you did as a counselor, and how do you think the city did as a community? Ooh. Okay. So for myself... I think that the first meeting I went to where I felt that I was a competent member of city council was maybe uh, November 14th of this year. <laughs> um, and that is, that is by no means a reflection on other members of council, staff, that is just me personally grappling with how steep the learning curve is for someone who is not a, you know, typical or obvious candidate for municipal politics. And I talked a lot about this when I was campaigning in 2022, where I was like, I'm going to need 
a lot of grace in the very beginning because I am absolutely learning. I know that there are going to be things where I will mess up, where people will interpret that all of council has messed up. And I just wanted to be like, please give me patience. Please give me a little bit of grace. Give me the benefit of the doubt that this wasn't like that my intentions or the impact and result of certain decisions, you know, was never malicious. So it was, it was like, yeah, like a year, maybe a little bit more later where I really felt that I was like, I am competent. I deserve to be here. I worked really hard to get here and I feel good about the contributions that I'm making. And I don't feel like a fraud, like a ding dong, all of these things. So that, that that's the first part. City wise, I think there were some, some flops in the beginning, but I also think as a team, we were getting our sea legs. There are certain things that I wholeheartedly disagreed with um, that came about from certain motions from my colleagues. And I think we made the wrong call. However, it seems that I am the only one who really feels, maybe not the only one, but of the of the minority that feels that certain decisions were made that I wasn't okay with. So on the whole, I think we're we're figuring it out and we're growing and we're working on, you know, being a cohesive team. But there are absolutely things where we do not mesh up or align either values wise or interest wise. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but I'm also, you know, the kind of person who is just like, this is so incredibly important and obvious to me. How, how is it not the same for other people? So I don't know if I were to give it a letter grade, I would say maybe B minus. And yeah, I think I'll leave it there. So the second question, because that was a one question with two parts in it. The second question is, <laughs> as this is the December 31st, looking to 2024, what do you hope to do as a counselor? What is on your radar for 2024 to ensure that you are a better counselor on December 31st, 2024? but also a better representative for the people of Dryden. Ooh. This is like a big, what's your counselor resolution question? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, you? How? <laughs> what? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. I see you. Um, oh, man. So something that I am particularly passionate about that I would like to commit myself a little bit more to is the um I don't I don't even know how to say it beyond being like I want to make sure that Dryden is on its way to becoming a more climate ready city and so to me what that means is that we are protecting our cities and citizens' assets to the best of our abilities from the devastating effects of climate change, that we are, um, you know, working in policies that make sure that the city is protected long term, um, that we are making sure that it is easy for citizens to um, maybe invest in things that support you know, moving away from fossil fuels and, um, you know, composting or community gardens, those kinds of projects that focus um, maybe not explicitly on climate change and how do we, you know, mitigate all of those risks um, because we're already 
seeing them and they're already, you know, messing with a lot of things that are happening. We'll go through, you know, a year of insane and intense floods and then another year where, you know, it's forest fires all of the time. So we're already seeing these effects of climate change and they are already impacting people on the ground in our communities. So that's now that I'm feeling more and more competent in my role, that's where I would like to put a bit more of my energy, where I'm looking for um, creative solutions for our city to, you know, just be in a better position for the future. Scott, I want to thank you so much. Uh, this episode will be airing on December 31st, and we are looking back on 2023. As the president of FCM, as the mayor of the uh, town of Gore, Quebec, how was your 2023 uh, from a municipal perspective? Uh, difficult, challenging, but very proud of the work that we've done in my municipality and across the country. Um you know, it's it's difficult for municipalities. We don't have unlimited budgets like like other orders of government. But uh, I think every success is something that gives you energy. So, uh, yeah, tough, challenging, but happy uh, with the, the, the progress that we've made across the country in municipalities. Well, while we always talk about what happened, we always try to be sort of a forward thinking show. What do you what's in store for 2024 for Scott Pierce? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna continue uh, traveling back and forth across the country, uh, highlighting the incredible people that work in, in municipalities, whether it's employees and CEOs or uh, mayors and councillors. I I believe strongly in the work that we do, and uh, you know I've been so lucky over the years. I, I'm on the board of Federation of Quebec Municipalities. I'm the spokesperson for the bilingual municipalities of Quebec, and as president of FCM. Um, 99.9% .9 of the people that, that are municipally that are elected, I find are deeply caring people who love their communities and do everything they can to improve their communities. And I'm just proud to be president. I, I think it's, it's one of the biggest honors of my life. Uh, second to my wife marrying me and, uh, and she's still married to me. So I think I've done something good there <laughs> <laughs> for now. <laughs> To our viewers, thank you for tuning in and for being part of this conversation. And I truly mean that. Over the last 12 months, we have expanded our show so much that I didn't expect it to be well received like it has been. Looking back on the last 12 months, whether it be through the cross-border interviews lens or this show, the municipal affairs lens, or even our third show, the political trenches, local government at work, we have found a true following of municipal lovers just like myself. I didn't think that there would be that many people out there who'd want to talk or even listen to people talk about municipal affairs, but I am so honored and pleased that you have found a voice in me, hopefully, a voice to listen to and a source where you can hopefully trust the information we are providing you. We don't come in with any set agenda. We never expect it to be doing this for 178 episodes on the cross-border interviews, 28 episodes here on the municipal affairs, or even 36 episodes in 2023 of our other show, The Political Trenches, Local Government at Work. We, we, we truly just want to elevate the people who are making our lives better at the community level so often our municipal politics overlooked. We often talk about what's going on in Ottawa, what's going on in the provincial or territorial capital, but we don't often reflect on what's going on here in our own communities, in our own backyards. So hopefully over the last 12 months, you have found hopefully something you can attach yourself to on this show. We have been so honored and blessed to have been able to chat with so many municipal leaders from across Canada, from the shores of Vancouver to the tip of St. John's, from Inuvit Northwest Territories to even Windsor, Ontario. I have been so blessed to be able to be a conduit for you, the viewers, the listeners, the municipal leaders who have listened to the show after they've appeared on it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, 
as we always look do on the show, we look back on 2023 with some rosy eyes. There were some hiccups, of course. We always try to learn from what we're doing, and we are hopefully going to be bringing you some more great content in 2024. Now, the Cross Border Interviews show, our main show, will be coming back on Monday, February 5th at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So look forward to that. We are going to be going full bore five days a week, as we always did. This show, the Municipal Affairs, will be off for a few weeks and we'll be returning by the middle of January, late January, on Monday at 10 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. So please tune in for that. The Political Trenches Local Government Network will be returning in two weeks time so be sure to make sure you hit the subscribe button on wherever you get your plat- uh, podcast and in the meantime we have sort of made it a challenge for ourselves so in 2023 we visited just over 195 municipalities across canada now that it was from alberta all the way to Quebec. This year, 2024, as we reflect on what is coming ahead, we have pledged to make that 600. So in 2024, 365 days, we have pledged to visit 600 communities across this great country. Now, we're going to make it a little bit harder for ourselves because who doesn't like a challenge? We have pledged that 130 of those 600 municipalities will come from each province and territory. So 10 10 municipalities in each province and territory will be visited by us in 2023. That seems like a lot. And I agree, it is a lot. But we are up for that challenge. We are always up for that challenge. And the great thing about this is you're going to be along for the ride. Every single one of those 600 municipalities we will be visiting, we will be doing a 10, two to 10 minute video that will be only available on our Facebook page, our Threads account, and our YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, go hit that subscribe button because you will not want to miss them. We're going to be showing you some of the highlights, some of these communities that have been on our show, giving us some great tourism destinations. We're going to show you them up close and personal. So I really hope you enjoy that new part of this show. We will be updating you throughout the year of how we have been doing around getting to those 600 communities, but... I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to exploring our great, great country once again this year and visiting some of these great municipal leaders who have graciously taken time out of their busy schedule to appear on our show. So with that, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button on Facebook, on Threads, on LinkedIn, or even Instagram, YouTube. Please, it would be greatly appreciated. Now... (laughs) As always, because this show can't be done without contributions from viewers and listeners like you. Please consider backing the show to help us to continue to grow. We have set a pretty big agenda for us in 2024. And yes, we will be bringing you more stories from municipalities from across Canada. And yes, we can officially say this. We are going to be hiring some freelance journalists throughout the year to help us cover some of these municipal stories from across Canada. So if you believe in our mission, if you believe in the dedication of quality local journalism, please head over to our Cross Border Interviews website and click the support the show page now for a monthly donation, from a one-time donation, from an annual donation. Your contributions will help us to continue to deliver the content that you've come to expect from us, but also more content that you want to see. So with that, I just want to take this moment and say thank you, everyone, for tuning in in 2023. Please remember to stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, as this is the end of 2023, Happy New Year's and see you in 2024.